Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to thee in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And we thank you for Jesus interceding in our behalf. We ask for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher now as we open your word to lead and guide us into all the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We have been dealing in the last program um, about this a power that was going to think to change even God's law. Mm -hmm. We read um, statements, statements, yeah, recent statements from different popes, Benedict the Sixteen, even Paul II. E even Paul, like John Paul the Second, and even Francis has and, been and, pushing through Laudato Si. And Thomas Appointed. And, 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 and the great Thomas theologian, Aquinas. Thomas Acquainted. Can we paraphrase basically what Thomas Acquainted said without reading that basically, again? He just basically, said, basically what he said was that the change of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. because they, he talks about the new law. Mm -hmm. The new law for the day of rest is on is called the Lord's Day, right. which was they're talking about Sunday. That was instituted not by a precept by God right. or a change in the word of God. That was done by the institution of the church. And by custom and of by the church. Custom, or custom or tradition, of, of, right. of Christian traditions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So, and the last pope, of course, uh, Francis, has been pushing for that too. It's, it's like a, it's no longer a heating agenda. Yeah. No. Pope Benedict and Pope John Paul II mm. both push for civil legislation of Sunday worship. That's right, civil. And, and even Francis now is pushing that for that. That shows Because no, that to see. That shows that the uh, Vatican is totally opposed to the U.S. Constitution. In which respect? That we are to not make any law. As Respecting the establishment of religion or, yeah. free, or prohibiting okay. free exercise thereof. Right, yeah. that's right. So, so we have to pay attention to all this because the closer we'll be getting to the end, more and more, we need to be awake. And that's what we're trying to do. Wake you all up for these things that is about to happen in this earth. Because if we would take heed to Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict, then the United States government would be forcing everyone to disobey God's law. And, and again, in France too. Yeah. Okay, in France. So what we're going to see, but now the whole idea was that we were showing that we asked, was there a change of God's law on earth? Mm -hmm. Because we know that Satan sought to change the law in heaven. Mm -hmm. So we know that Satan is able to transform himself into an angel of light. Right, we read And it. come in human form. We read all that. Program, right. right. So now, therefore, if that's the case, when he shall come as Christ in his assumed form, what will he seek to do? Mm -hmm. Because we know that God's message concerning the third angel's message mm -hmm. that warns the people about worshiping the beast in his image is going to be worldwide, spread worldwide. Mm -hmm. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout the world, this everlasting gospel mm -hmm. to all the world, and then shall the end come. So as the people of God are filled with the spirit and with the latter rain to give this final message, then we know one thing for certain. Satan will come as Christ to seek to circumvent mm -hmm. the, the, the movement of the people coming into a knowledge of what the word of God says about the worship between Sabbath and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And that will be the he, climax that was a, of, that, that, of that's, deception. That's why it's called the crowning, the crowning act. act. And as a result, he will say what? He will say what? If, if, the, if, we're, if the world is coming into a knowledge that God has the seventh day as the Sabbath, and Satan comes as Christ in an assumed form as Christ, walking the earth, and say that he, so it's natural that he would be against mm. the, the proclamation of the Sabbath at the end of time, mm. and will lead the world through his assumed disguise as Christ to believe that we have, he has changed the Sabbath to Sunday. Right. Right. I want to share with you from a little book that we have called The Great Controversy. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to see this here. It says, as the crowning act, 
As the crowning act in the great drama, Satan himself will personate Christ. Mm. Now, it said, now, personate Christ means he will look like Christ as well as sound like Christ. Mm. All right? Do miracles. Do, do miracles. So the church has long professed to look for the Savior's advent. And, as, and it says here, as the consummation of our hopes, now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ is come in different parts of the earth. In where? Different parts. Different parts. Different doesn't mean that's not, that's, not a, that's not a worldwide second coming when every eye will see based on Revelation 1-7 and Matthew 24-30. Jerusalem will probably or, be one of those places. Or, or Matthew 24 uh, that says, as lightning come out east and shine from to the west, so shall also come in Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. Different parts of the earth means he's walking the earth, but ladies and gentlemen. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being Whoa. of dazzling brightness. Mm -hmm. It says here, of dazzling brightness, resembling the Son of God given, in, given, to John, given by John in Revelation 1, verses 13 through 15. The glory that surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything mortal eyes have beheld. The shout of triumph rings through the air. Christ has come. Christ has come. The people prostrate themselves in adoration before him while he lifts up his hands to pronounce a blessing upon them. As Christ blessed his disciples when he was upon the earth, his voice is soft and subdued yet full of melody. In gentle, compassionate tones, he presents the same, some of the same gracious heavenly truths which the Savior uttered. He heals the diseases of the people. And then, in his assumed character of Christ, he claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday and commands all to hallow the day which he has blessed. He declares that those who persist in keeping holy the seventh day are blaspheming his name by wow. refusing to listen to his angels sent, with them with, sent them with light and truth. This is the strong, almost overmastering delusion. And she compares it to Acts 8.10. It says here, can you read Acts 8.10 for me? Mm -hmm. From the Bible. When do you get this? Okay, Acts 8.10. 8, verse 10 says, To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Okay, wait, read verse, seven, read, read, read verse 9. With that. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, mm -hmm. to it's whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And so listen carefully. It says here, Like the Samaritans who were deceived by Simon Magus, the multitudes from the least to the greatest give heed to these sorceries, saying, This is the great power of God. But the people of God will not be misled. The teachings of this false Christ are not in accordance with the scriptures. Hmm. His blessings is pronounced upon the worshipers of the beast and his image and the very class upon whom the Bible declares that God's unmingled wrath shall be poured out. And furthermore, Satan is not permitted to counterfeit the manner of Christ's advent the Savior has warned his people against this deception and upon this point and has clearly foretold the manner of his second coming. There shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch if it was possible they would deceive the very elect. Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in a desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in a secret chamber, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Hmm. Matthew 24, 24 through 27, and verse 31. Matthew 25, 31. Revelation 1, 7, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. This coming, it says, this coming, there is no possibility of counterfeiting. It will be universally known, witnessed by the whole world. Yeah, uh, we're living in a time of internet, you know, the, the, the social media. Can you imagine, just think about for a moment, <laughs> internet now is reaching almost, almost 100% of the globe, about 80, 85%. When this thing happened, in one day, maybe one day, everybody will be witnessing 
what you just read. But the good news is, too, in one day, the whole world will be in contact, if they want it, with the truth being preached by those men and women that will be in uh, opposition in, uh, uh, yeah, preaching the, the seven day Sabbath. Because mm -hmm. there'll be, it's a two power, remember that. It's a two, two groups. Mm -hmm. One group following the great Babylon, Babylon the Great, the men of, the men of sin with, with Satan himself mm -hmm. being appearing as Christ, uh -huh. and another group found in Revelation 14 yeah. following the Lamb, Jesus Christ. It's also, it, it's also important to bring out that in Revelation 18, it shows that the group of people that will deal with this issue is not just a Sabbath. The Sabbath in Sunday are the major issues of the controversy. But what type of character will the people who have the truth be of? Because there are people who do keep the Sabbath, but they do not believe in, some of them do not believe in a second coming of Christ. Mm. Others believe that Christ is coming in secret mm. and different things of that nature. So let's, let's, let's take a little bit closer and, look at that point for a moment. Let me expand just that thought mm -hmm. a little bit too. Yes. And there are many still keeping the, the, the spurious, the false S Sabbath, Sabbath mm -hmm. Sunday, but in their light they have, they have got, they have had the little light. They are being showing the character of Christ. Right. Now, this so is those men and women, that's when Revelation 18, Jesus called them, Come out of her, my people. My people. See now, so so that many God, the it, majority of God's children today are let, in those popular. Let's churches. go a little bit further. In other words, God has faithful people yeah. in all churches, including Amen. the Catholic Church. Amen. And so, as a result of that, we need to keep in mind that, but God says, "My sheep." Patrick brought out earlier in John chapter 10, "My sheep hear my voice." Amen. And the, the voice is meaning the word of God. Amen. There are those who are faithfully trying to follow the scriptures to Amen. the best light they had. Amen. But as the light of prophecy shines on them, mm -hmm. as God's spirit begins to move and brings conviction, Amen. many of them will be brought, pull, come, will, through the conviction of the spirit, will be coming out of the different churches and adjoining themselves with those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith and testimony of Jesus Christ. And, and this is not just something of the, view, of the future. This is taking place right now as we are speaking. Mm -hmm. In Latin America, mm -hmm. in Europe, and even in the United States mm -hmm. of America, we see people more and more waking up, paying attention to these messages. Not that long ago, a couple, beautiful people, they, they were just driving to their churches on Sunday morning. Let me tell you this. But let me come right back. I'll come right back and tell you the rest of the story. Hi, friends. I'd like to introduce you to a special book that we have available. It's the story of Pastor Rafael Perez's journey from preparing to be a priest in the Roman Catholic Church and how God worked very providentially in his life to turn him from that decision to following Jesus in the light of present truth. If you've been blessed by the Eternal Gospels program, We want to invite you to receive our new book entitled From Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. It is the personal testimony of our speaker and director, Rafael Perez. But more than this, if you want courage, if you want strength, this personal testimony of this 150-page book will give you insights into why God is calling men and women out of Babylon. And if you'd like to receive it today, just call the number at the bottom of your screen and ask for offer 777. That's offer 777. Why seven? Because the seventh day is the Sabbath. Why seven? Because the Sabbath was sanctified. Why seven? Because the final issues in this great controversy is between the Sabbath and Sunday. That is my journey. I hope and pray that you are going to order the book right now, from Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. May God bless you all. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, so I was telling you um, that this is not something of the future. 
God is waking up his people, his children. Not that long ago, a man was going with his wife, driving in the Sunday morning, you know, to one of those Sunday keeping churches. All of a sudden, they turn on the radio. And in South Florida, it, it, it will be hard for you to miss the voice of the eternal gospel, either English or Spanish. Amen. We, we're in several stations. That's good. <laughs> by God's grace, yes. right? Praise and, the Lord. And, and it, by God's grace, it's going even to California mm -hmm. and some other stations, okay? So, to make a long story short, all of a sudden, they, as, soon as, they, as soon as they turned on the radio, guess what? It was the voice of the Eternal Gospel, in Spanish in this case, one hour program. And then all of a sudden, they heard about this, you know, pastor and his guests talking about. You know, the, the everlasting gospel versus the social gospel or the ecumenical gospel. You know, when we talk about the law of God, you know, the, how God expects us as a sign of love to him, as a sign that we are being saved by grace, that we should be keeping God's commandment. We talk about the seventh day Sabbath. By the time they, got, they arrived to their churches and the parking lot, they, they couldn't put the, they could not put the radio off. They, they remained in the parking lot. Amen. The same day, they called the office, left the message. They want to get more information on that topic. The two weeks from that time or the following week, they end up meeting in our church. By God's grace, they end up being baptized. And they never went back to that popular church. Wow. Never, ever. Like God, it's still today, they've been faithful. Amen. Another man, quickly, uh, used to attend the Roman Catholic seminary. He came across this voice of the eternal gospel uh, from our program. Hmm. He also accepted the, this message. I had the privilege to baptize him, his wife, who, who was very opposed at the beginning, because she has a, she's a niece of one of the cardinal, Roman Catholic cardinal, but oh. she understood by the power of the Holy Spirit that she must follow Christ instead of man. Yes. That man was uh, training to be a priest in the... A, a Roman Catholic priest too, yeah, well, at the seminary. We need to tell the audience about your new book coming up. Oh, about from Babylon the Great to the eternal gospel. Yeah. Okay. We're offering that book, yeah, free of charge. Well, you need to at least show it. Just, just, just show the people. Same as ministry. You have a copy of your book? There? You have a picture of the book? We got the picture there. I've seen it right there. Oh, in you, the, in okay, the, you uh, don't have it here. I just in, in the screen. It's okay. right there. On All the right, screen. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, let's go back to Revelation chapter six, six, 16 now. 15. So, but we're going to see in the near future. 16. It's like you've never seen before. Right. So let's go. Company well, after company will come. Priests, evangelical pastors, lay... I mean, it's going to be impossible for Satan trying to keep them over there in that tradition and custom. And the, but, the, come out. but the whole idea is that in the last days, the issue will be what does the scripture say versus mm. the miracle working that, power yeah. that you will see manifest. We will not be able to trust what we see or even what we feel, mm. but we must trust what the word of God says. Amen. We must stand Amen. on the principle Amen. of the teachings Amen. of the scriptures. May God in other words, the scriptures will be our only safeguard. Only those that fortify the mind with Bible truth will stand through the last great crisis that's coming. This great crisis and the crowning act of Satan will be one of the most uh, trying experiences of all God's people in the history of the world. Yeah, that's good to bring out. It's not going to com be coming out to a bed of roses. It's no, going, it's going to be a very trying experience. Yeah. And so we cannot participate. No pen can picture that experience. The only thing we can do is day by day be prepared in, in having communion with God that when, when that time should come, we be prepared to meet it. Humanly speaking, it will be almost impossible to overcome. But through Christ, yes. Yeah. By in, God's grace. We'll in Revelation overcome. chapter 18, though, yeah. the Bible tells us about, about the earth being light with his glory. And I asked mm -hmm. you, I wanted to show the condition mm -hmm. of the people who's going to be part of that movement. Mm -hmm. Because we know the Sabbath is a major key to it, but it's not just you keeping the Sabbath and living like you want to. Right. It's those who are living 
in living out what they believe. It's mm -hmm. talking about being the light. being sanctified right. through the truth, all right? Amen. It's very important that we understand that. And that sanctification is not in ourselves, but it's through Christ and his righteousness that we are sanctified. All right. Amen. By his all grace, right. It's yeah. no, it's not us talking about we're sanctified. Mm -hmm. It's Christ who sanctifies us by his grace and, and by the power of his spirit. And the Sabbath is a sign and of that. Sign, and the Sabbath is a sign of sanctification Sabbath. if you're in the spirit walking in obedience to God's law through righteousness. Do you remember those Bible verses? Yeah. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 20, 20, 12. 20. Okay. okay. But now look at here. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was light and was glory. An angel also means a messenger. Amen. So there's a message, a messenger brings a message. A message has come down from where? Heaven. What's in heaven, by the way? They have seen thy goings, O God, even the goings of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. So this message is coming from the sanctuary, are we sure? Go me to Psalms 102. Go ahead, brother. Read Psalms it. 102, 19. Read down before us. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven. Did the Lord behold the earth? Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. So that angel came down from heaven, but the message is coming from heaven out way of the sanctuary Amen. to the earth. And this angel has a message, and it says here, now what is the what is the it says, another son of angel come down from heaven having great what? Power. power. What is this power that's coming down from this with this message this angel has? Go me to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts 1, verse 8 mm -hmm. yeah. says, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So this is the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. being poured out. But now, what is the, by which agency, by which agency does God use for this power to flow come through? By what agency will God use? Go with me to... Um, Romans 1, 16 yeah, that's what and 17. Yeah. Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So this power is the power of the Holy Spirit, but the message that he brings is a message of the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing this? The righteousness of Christ, which is also the power of God unto what? Salvation. Salvation. It's through Christ's righteousness that we, are, that, 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 that we are able to proclaim this message. Mm -hmm. And so then the Bible tells us one other thing. So this, righteous, this, this agency is the gospel of Jesus Christ, or another word for it is also everlasting gospel. It, it, Revelation 14.6. Or the which eternal is the, gospel. Wait, uh, watch it, but go to Revelation 14.6 for a minute. Because what I want you to see is that this is, this is dealing with the outpouring of the Spirit or the latter rain. Right. But the latter rain is connected to the message of the everlasting gospel. Amen. Look what the Bible says in Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto the dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now notice very carefully, the Bible said the angel came down from heaven and the earth was lightened with his what? Glory. Glory. So the message lightens the earth. But what is this glory that the earth is enlightened with? Go with me to 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Wait, but before we go to 2 Corinthians 4, 6, go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 14. Read that for me. 2 Thessalonians 2, 14. Let's see if the agency of the gospel does that. Let's just see. 2 Thessalonians 2, 14. Let's just take a look together. 2, 14? Uh-huh, 2, 14. Okay. It says, Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the glory that the earth will be lightened with will be the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Another word for glory is character. Mm -hmm. Also with character comes the name of God. Amen. So these people who are going to be proclaiming this message have the character of Christ Amen. and they have the name of God. Right. All right, but go a little closer. It, Read that for me over in that's a, a good That's a good thing. Obtaining the glory of God right. through the gospel. Through the gospel. Amen. Now go to 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Look. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice again, so the earth is lightened with the what? Glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But where does this glory, where is this glory supposed to reside that the earth will see? Because the Bible said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout the world as a what? Witness unto all nations, Amen. right? Yeah. So wait a minute, so where is this glory supposed to reside? Go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. In Colossians 1, 26 and 27, it said, even the mystery. Mm -hmm. Mystery? What mystery? Oh, Colossians, yeah. What mystery is this that's going to be here? 
Remember, before we go, before I finish reading that, I want to know, so what is this mystery? Go to Revelation 10, verse 7, and tell me what that mystery is. Okay, Revelation 10, verse 7 says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, which he shall begin to sound, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Mm -hmm. This mystery is the mystery of God. But what is the mystery of God? Mystery of God is dealing with the mystery of godliness. Amen. All right? Which is going to be seen here. Watch carefully. In Colossians 1, 26. It's 26. Oh, yeah. Can you read it for us? Yeah. It says, Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. To made to manifest to his saints. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. To whom God would make, make it known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, the, the Gentiles. But not only Gentiles, but all of God's believers yeah, uh, in the end time. Right. Go on. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of what? Glory. Glory. So wait a minute. So the rain that's coming down, the glory of God, the outpouring of his spirit that's coming down is the message on righteousness by faith. But righteousness by faith is the rep is represented and witnessed by Christ being in you and me and in others as the hope of what? Glory, which goes back to the first angel's message that says, fear God and give what? Glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. What else does the angel say in Revelation 18? Um, you mm -hmm. mind if I read a verse from Isaiah? That yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. Arise, shine, Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, yes. shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the uh -huh. earth, gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. His glory shall be seen where? Upon, upon thee. So the gospel will be witnessed. What will be the witness of the gospel? The everlasting gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of Jesus Christ, what the, will be the final witness? The glory of God the, revealed. The glory of God revealed in us. Yeah. Whose can glory we, is this? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Right? Amen. Can we close with that note? It's a beautiful note. I, I love it. And I promise to you, I, I promise to you, there's so much more to expand in that beautiful thought from the gospel. Jesus in us, in you, the hope of glory. And we're going to see in the next program, if Jesus will be in you, the hope of glory, you will be obedient to all the commandments of God. May God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.